Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met with his Israeli counterpart Thursday to discuss concerns over Iran and its destabilizing activities, the Pentagon confirmed. While the Defense Department confirmed the meeting, a spokesman declined to address a Reuters report that said the two defense leaders would also touch on possible Iran-focused military exercises. I know there is interest in a certain Reuters report, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby told reporters on Thursday prior to the meeting. I will tell you this, we routinely conduct exercises and training with our Israeli counterparts, and I have nothing to announce to or speak to or point to or speculate about today. Kirby would only say that Austin and Israeli Defense Minister Benjamin Gantz would discuss Iran and its continued destabilizing activities. Gantz had tweeted Wednesday to say he and Austin would discuss possible modes of action to ensure the cessation of Iran's attempt to enter the nuclear sphere and broaden its activity in the region. Reuters reported that the two defense chiefs were expected to talk about possible military exercises meant to prepare for a worst case scenario to destroy Iran's nuclear facility should the United States and Iran not be able to revive a 2015 nuclear deal abandoned by then President Trump. A senior U.S. official told Reuters that on October 25th, Pentagon leaders briefed White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on military options available to prevent Iran from producing a nuclear weapon. The two meetings come as indirect talks on restarting a nuclear deal with Tehran have hit a snag with very little progress being made during negotiations in Vienna. I wonder why. Iran has already restarted production of enriching uranium, amassing a small stockpile of the material of at least 60% purity. Uranium needs to be enriched to 90% purity for nuclear weapons development. You learn something new every day. So there's a part of me that really believes this Reuters report about them uh, discussing military exercises to prepare for a worst case scenario to destroy Iran's nuclear facilities. Because, and I've said this before, the Israeli government is the arch enemy of the Iran government. So when you also consider that the U.S. will do whatever it takes to always appeal to the Israeli government, you know, calling people um, anti-Semitic, even though they've said nothing about Jewish people, they just criticize this government, they, they call you that. I have no doubt in my mind that the Israeli government is trying to get the U.S. to lobby behind it to go after Iran who are putting up stipulations that, that I believe are very reasonable. I, remember, they're the ones who were complying with this deal before Trump pulled out of it. Um, but they're going to go after them for not just going back into the deal at our, at our command, which is why there's been very little development with getting them back in it, because they have a, a couple more stipulations that the U.S. doesn't want to comply with um, because they're antagonistic to them. So I could really see this being the case. And let's not forget Gantz's tweet. We will discuss possible modes of action to ensure the cessation of Iran's attempt to enter a nuclear sphere. So what if they enter the nuclear sphere? You know, just... God, but th that goes back to my thing of how I find it completely believable that the U.S. and Israel, you know, with, with their very close, um, incestuous relationship with each other, would try to plot an attempt to mess with Iran if they don't want to comply with this deal, which it looks like we're not going to get anyway, because the U.S. won't, you know, acquiesce to the petulance of a country that acquiesced to its petulance for three years before it had the deal ripped up in front of its face. So I, I feel very bad for Iran. I think they've been given a really, um, they're, they're just in a very bad position. You, you have a country referring to us, the U.S., that is bipolar and has, you know, this want of trying to get you back in the deal, but also doesn't want to understand that it betrayed you by ripping it up in front of your face when you're complying with it and it's also got another country referring to israel whose government is in your, their ear telling them oh you know it's okay don't don't try to you know get back with them we can just do something later to destroy all of your all of their weapons the very same weapons that we we make as well it's just it's it's really hypocritical and um iran is the sympathetic character here they're they're in a bad position no matter what way you spin it